Kachataru. In this video, we're going to take a look at a really fun question involving arithmetic sequences. And you might go, but come on, Mr. True, they're so easy. They just generally give us all the numbers and the answers pop out. We just use a formula for the general term and the partial sum. Same with the um, geometric sequences. But this time, we're going to have to uh, dig into our toolbox and use multiple skills at the same time. This is written um, and inspired by a type of question that you may see on an IB uh, math exam or just an interesting exam, a fun exam, something maybe like a bonus question or just, you know, involving more than one or two skills at the same time. So we have here in an arithmetic sequence, the sum of the third and seventh terms is two. And given the sum of the first eight terms is 24, determine the first term and the common difference. How often do you see questions about arithmetic and geometric sequences where they don't hardly tell you anything? Uh, we don't know a common difference. We don't have even any specific terms to build off of. Um, we just know that the sum of the third and the seventh is two, and the sum of the first eight is 24. Well, now the sum of the first eight, that sounds like a partial sum formula. I guess you could kind of argue, oops, excuse me, for all the noise. I guess you could argue that they're both partial sums, but we have a formula to help us with the first eight. So let's not forget that a geomet or excuse me, an arithmetic sequence is a just basically a list of numbers that are created with constant addition. Your general term is a sub n. n is just that um, that value that's counting along the index. Are you looking at the first, the second, the third number, or so on? a sub n is equal to a sub one, the first term, plus n minus one times d. Your common difference. Um, maybe you're constantly adding by two or five or minusing seven every time, or some kind of fractional value. Partial sum. Uh, the sum of the first um, so many terms is equal to um, n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. We're going to rely on these formulas and our confidence in our math skills to uh, work through this problem. And if we don't have any concrete numbers right away, like it's not just, you can't just glance at it and go, oh, a sub 1 is 10. That's okay. Just keep going. Know what you've written is correct. Fill in uh, the formulas that is uh, involved in this question. Like the sum of the uh, third and the seventh term is two. Well, why don't we just set up a formula for adding those two and set it equal to two. The third term in the sequence, not the first, the third term in the sequence is going to be equal to the first term plus n, which is going to be 3 for a sub 3, so 3 minus 1 times the common difference. So a sub 3 is equal to a sub 1 plus 2d. See, we know what a sub 3 is. It's whatever that is. a sub 7, well, a sub 7 is going to be a sub 1 plus 7 minus 1 times d a sub 1 plus 60. I'm finding it kind of hard to write neatly this morning for some reason. Now, when you take these two terms, a sub 3 and a sub 7, and add them, it needs to be 2. So, okay, we don't really know what these the third and seventh um, term or number in the arithmetic sequence is, but when we add them, a sub 1 plus 2d plus a sub 1 plus 6d, that needs to come out to be 2. Combining like terms, we have 2 times a sub 1 plus 8d is equal to 2. Divide everything by 2 correctly, unlike the first attempt to shoot this video, and we have a sub 1 plus two, uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4d, and make sure you divide both sides. There we go. Made that mistake. I wrote it as 2 a minute ago. Now, this is going to be some, again, it's, it's an equation. I mean, I still don't know what any concrete numbers are. I don't know what the first term is, nor do I know yet the common difference, but I have some relation between those two that I've created from the fact that the third and eighth, seventh, excuse me, term add up to two. Now let's turn our attention with a different color. 
to the fact that the sum of the first eight terms is 24. See what we get off of that. The sum of the first eight terms is going to be equal to, well now we're going to use that partial sum formula, n8 over 2. And what is the partial sum formula asking for? The first term, which we don't know, and the nth term, or in this case the eighth term, the a sub 8 term. Well, I don't really have the a sub 8 term, so we're going to have to figure that out, just like we found out the a sub 3 and a sub 7th term, and get the phone. So trying that again, we have a sub 8 is equal to a sub 1 times n minus 1, 8 minus 1, plus, I said times, plus 7d. Okay, so a sub 8 is a sub 1 plus 7d. And a sub 8 is equal to 24. So we have 24 is equal to what? 4 times a plus a is 2a sub 1 plus 7d. Divide both sides by 4 and we get 6 is equal to 2a sub 1 plus 7d. Great. Well, I still don't necessarily know much, but we're getting close. We have a formula relating a sub 1 and d together based on the sum of the first eight terms. It's right here in purple. We've got a relation between a sub 1 and d for when we add the third and the seventh term. This is now getting into something you learned back in Algebra 1. It's a linear system and you solve um, a two variable linear system by either doing linear combination or substitution. I'm going to go ahead and pick substitution because here we have a nice neat um, a sub 1 is equal to 1 minus 4d. Let's go ahead and plug this in to a sub 1 because and we could I mean we can find a or a sub 1 or d first it doesn't matter but uh, this is going to be a cleaner substitution. That's going to give us that 6 is equal to 2 times a sub 1 which is 1 minus 4d plus 7d that's going to give us, after we distribute by 2 and combine like terms, 6 is equal to 2 minus 8d plus uh, 7d. We have 4, after we subtract by 2, is equal to negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1d, and negative 4 is our common difference. Well, now that we know what our common difference is, we can go up here and say that, well, using this relationship here, that a sub 1 is equal to 1 minus 4 times d, which is negative 4. That's 1 plus six, uh, 16. a sub 1 is equal to 17. Now, if you want to double check this, it's really simple. You just start listing off uh, and creating those terms. a sub 1 is 17. a sub 2 is 13, because you're subtracting by 4. Okay, I'm going to run out of space if I keep writing a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, but we have 17, 13, 9, take away 4, 5, 1, negative 3, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 11. Now you can add up these terms and make sure that you get the 24 that it is. Add the third and the 4, 5, 6, seventh term, we have 9 plus negative 7 is 2, and we have checked our answer. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go do that homework.